I think we're going to have another light problem. But I have the cat to compensate. So, yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to episode 13 of my Fiverr podcast. My name is Audrey and this is a podcast about weaving, knitting and other yarny crafts. Um, so hello, I hope you had a nice week, I did. Um, and yeah, today I am doing something a bit differently than the past 12th episode, which is podcast notes because I realized that last time I forgot to talk about a finished project which was um, the mittens um, so in my defense it's June so whether or not is not super appropriate for me to think about mittens <laughs> but yeah and I have a pretty tropical pastel notebook where I literally 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 no I just wrote making podcast notes. Anyway, um, yeah, hopefully that won't happen again now. I just want to keep track of what, I, of what I'm doing, which is, yeah, which is also the purpose of this podcast. So if I forget things, it's not working. I have cat hair. Um, yes. <laughs> I think we can start with some weaving. As usual, I am working on a big commission. Um, not much to say about it, except that I'm trying really hard to make it neat and to make the colors work together. Um, I think, I think sadly, I think sadly, I, I am now a bit um, hesitant and not so sure. I am at the point where I think I need to do a lot more of the piece to to be um, reassured about the look. But um, yeah, I just put in some pictures of my progress as usual and move on quite fast because yeah, not much new to say about that one. If you remember a couple of Weeks ago, I started doing um, some wall hanging slash dream catchers that were using not only yarn, but as well um, beads weaving. And I had the blue one on the works to go with that pinky, pinky one, and I finished it. This went into a lot of different... Um, ideas and views. My first thing, if you remember, I showed it to you when I started it, it started quite big and then it randomly um, went into a thin band. I kind of liked the random, the random effect, the random vibe of it, but it was just looking wonky. So I ripped it off and I started, I decided to only make a band. And my original idea was to have this one crossing the circle and then to pick up beads and go backwards here and make just only half the way here to the top. But I finished this and I wasn't sure about the second part. I thought that he would make a really obvious T shape, T like the letter, and I didn't want that. And I kept looking at it and trying to put it in a neutral background and I think it is it is simple enough like this it's it looks much better and much more um, clean that way the beads are woven they're Miyuki beads the delicate one they're woven in brick stitch oh my god <laughs> the grain in that video is going to be fabulous are woven. Uh, they're woven quite randomly. Here you have some sort of a pattern, but soon it's like it looks like it's disintegrating into craziness. But yeah, I like how it looks. And the fringe, I've said it before, this is Knit Cosmic String Sea Spray. And this is Fil d'Art Fil Diamant in the Peacock colorway. And so now I have a pink peach gold and a blue one and they're both um, in my Etsy shop so if you like them 
they're there waiting for new homes so I'm very glad I'm done with that because I was starting to get tired of it and I have a few ideas for our wall hangings that look like this so I really wanted to have this done to get on with the new things and hopefully I will start them in the near future yeah um, I have some more weaving to show you this week if you remember a while ago I started some cushion covers um, I actually made a tutorial showing you how I warp um, the Funem Studio Rigid Handaloom and this was the warp I was working on for those cushions and I have finished them they were really quick to make uh, the reason it took me a few weeks is that I was focusing on other things including that beads thing <laughs> but I I whipped them up um, last Saturday and I have two of them and this is how uh, the fabric looks like uh, they need a press obviously um, but I'm waiting to cut the back of the pillow which would be a simple white cotton and I'll press everything together so yeah this is one and this is two they're fairly they're not perfectly sim similar identical I mean but they're similar um yeah I really like the way the colors play together I really like how the warp is showing um in the different color section so yeah the queen of england was asking me uh about why is the warp showing in the commission that i'm making for her and if it's intentional and if if i can <laughs> get rid of it <laughs> um but yeah so i just wanted to talk quickly about sets now i'm not working on a big floor loom where um and thinking set would be really crucial uh, to for me to be able to work but so i'm not a complete expert on it but yeah basically um the way weaving works is you need to uh, consider how the warp so the vertical threads and the weft so the horizontal threads are going to interact with one another if um if none of them is dominant meaning that they have the same the same thickness and that they occupy the same uh, number of the same space basically um, the way you can determine that is to know the wraps per inch or centimeter of your yarn meaning that it's kind of hard <laughs> to explain to it um, basically when you see that the yarn is, say, 9 wraps per inch, I think that's like worsted. It means that if you pack it, not too tight, just if you simply let it rest. Okay, I'm going to take a piece of, of yarn <laughs> and show you. If you let them rest next to each other, loosely, without packing them, but just so that they still touch each other like this. If you let them rest for an inch, you're gonna have nine strands. So basically this is a way to know the weight of your yarn. And this is useful for weaving because if you want a balanced set, like you have in tartan, in plaid, and in any other weave where you want the warp and the weft to look to show together uh, you're gonna have to consider that the warp and the weft need to have the same wraps per inch in the end so say you have a handle that place your warp threads at 10 10 um, 10 threads per inch you have to make sure that your weft is not going to be any thicker or any thinner than 10 wraps per inch am i making sense trying to explain things completely unprepared basically if 
the warp and the weft occupy the same space and are balanced, they're going to show, which is what they're doing here. You can see the vertical lines of the warp and they're crisscrossing the weft. It's also what happens in tartan and in plaid. When you see crosses like this in weaven, in weaving, it means that the cloth has a balanced set. Now in tapestry, traditionally the weft is supposed to um, be dominant over the warp and to cover it fully. So when you're doing a tapestry, when you're working on a tapestry loom, usually your warp threads will be quite spaced. They will be quite far apart. You often have one every five millimeter. And I have no idea how, how that translates into per inch or things. But basically, the warp threads are less dense, so they're going to be covered by your weft. Now that is, considering your yarn isn't too thick, if you're using a thick yarn over a spaced warp, they're going to balance out. Because if your yarn is... is if I'm starting to have lisps. <laughs> If your yarn is thick, then it's going to occupy more space and it will eventually match the space between your warp threads. So the warp threads will show. Now, that doesn't bother me. On the contrary, I feel it brings some texture. And if I wanted to have a really smooth covered tapestry, I would only use one yarn um, to make sure that they all match together. But yeah, basically you can only pack down the weft to a certain point. And if it just is thick, then it's thick and it's not going to cover the warp fully. So yeah, just these are the things you need to consider when you start weaving is if you want the warp to show or not. Now, I know of uh, warp dominant fabrics. To be honest, I don't know how well how they work of or any examples of them. I I think that when you know when they paint the warp like they do in iCat, I don't know how you're supposed to say it. When you have a warp that's painted and you basically fill in with weft, but the weft isn't the one that you're seeing, you're seeing the warp in the finished cloth. So yeah, I think that's the that's the main case where the warp would be dominant. But yeah, that was just a little <laughs> try on explanation between four sets. And yeah, so this is sort of balanced. Um, what happened is that on the normal um, part of the cloth, my weft is a bit thinner than my warp. So what happened is that it is quite packed, but it still shows the warp because it's thinner. So unless I would pack it down like a crazy woman wanted to make tapestry, then it would have hidden the warp, but I didn't want that. I wanted the warp to show. So thinner yarn than the warp, um, packed, pushed down, sorry, um, in a gentle way, <laughs> makes a sort of balanced set. And for the big yarn, what happens is that uh, not only is it really fluffy, it's almost, um, it's almost like pencil roving. So um, it doesn't have a great um, tightness to it, so it naturally will look quite quite smooth. It is thick, so it matches the spacing of the warp. And that's why in those part, the warp is showing a lot, because the set is rather balanced. I hope that made sense. Uh, I'm sure it didn't, <laughs> but I'll, uh, yeah, if you have any questions and 
maybe I can answer to you in the comments and I am usually a little bit more efficient at explaining things writing than talking. You comfy? No? No. Yeah, he's being a cutie. <laughs> Um, with that, I believe we are done with weaving. Like I said, I have plans to make some wall hangings, but I want to film the process and to make like a time-lapse video or something showing you every step of a wall hanging, um, weaving. But for that, I would need some bloody sun. <laughs> Just one day, please. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I. the thing is, I couldn't figure out how to set up my phone so that he would film the top of my table um, but um, my boyfriend came up with an idea so hopefully um, this setup will work and I will try it on as soon as there's some sun uh, because I need to make some of those um, wool hangings for the summer um, yeah Maybe you'll have some weaving content, some new weaving content next week. Maybe not. We'll see. It's not like I am lacking any knitting content. So, so yeah, we can jump into knitting. The mittens that I forgot to show you um, last week's, last week. So. Those are the world's simplest mittens. It's a free pattern by, by Tinker Knits. And they are knitted out of uh, Knit Cosmic Strings Peony in their um, Peony colorway in their DK Angel base, which is um, alpaca, cashmere, and silk. Yeah, baby alpaca, cashmere, I think. I'm silk, I think. And it is super soft. It is super soft. I still have a lot of it left. I'm thinking of weaving it because it's really beautiful, a beautiful colorway, and um, and it, the color arrangement looks really good when you weave. Um, it is really something that I wish more people would weave variegated yarn because they're really look good. But yes. I've made mittens. I've used a little bit less than half a hundred grams, maybe 40 grams or something. And they're really comfy. They're fitted exactly how they need to be. I didn't block them because I didn't see the need to block them. I mean, the stitches look good. They fit well. They're fine. Um, I'll wash them at some point uh, when I'll have them worn in the winter. But yes, I casted on 34 stitches, which is the child size. Child size. I, uh, I did the rib. I made a few uh, rows more than what the pattern says. It's all written in my Ravelry project page. So check what I did, you can look there. I think I did one more row of stockinette uh, before starting the thumb, the thumb, the thumb gusset. And yeah, basically then I kept trying it on while packing down the thumb hole to make sure that I will have enough room for the top. Because I have quite long fingers. Yeah, they look a bit silly because they're super long. <laughs> They're super thin and super long, but I guess that's how my hands are. <laughs> but yeah, and then you basically pick up the stitches around the thumb gusset. I picked up one extra one. The pattern tells you to pick up one at one corner, but what I did is that I picked up one at each corner, I knitted around, and then I decreased that extra stitch that I had, um, just because uh, the hole in the corner would have been absolutely massive if I didn't pick up that extra stitch. But yeah, now basically when you're weaving the end, you you fill up the hole. So yes, 
I really like how the corner you did that. That gold is perfect. But yes, I'm really happy with them. I really liked making mittens and which is a good thing considering I have probably like five or six mittens uh, patterns either stuck on my computer or on my Ravelry queue. So yeah. Mittens, mittens. I'm glad I showed them to you. <laughs> I, I I think I realized that I forgot about them like the second I stopped filming. Um, or maybe just when I was editing and it was too late and I was like, oh no. Um, but now they're here and they're going to get buried in the closet and come out like in four months. But anyway, I, I really want to knit all the shawls, all the sweaters. It's like I'm dedicating my summer to getting ready for for winter. Um, just in case, you know, there's like a end of the world and we desperately need um, sweaters. I have another finished object. It's my Gather Shawl by Andrea Maori. And... It's not so good because I washed it <laughs> with a really good smelling um, soap. No. Okay, it looks wrinkled because it was like bundled like this, but it's super big. Um, I didn't stretch it while block it because uh, as soon as I wet it, the lace part just spread perfectly. Like, I didn't want it any more um, opened. It was... it's perfect. So I didn't need to stretch it while blocking it. So, this is the Gather Shawl by Andrea Murray. I've knitted it out of Knit Picks palette, um, hand-painted in Northern Lights, Lights, Northern Lights. And this is um, Artist's palette, Smoothie Sock in the Glacier colorway. She's on Etsy. And voila. Um, I love the look of it. It is stunning. Um, I was afraid it would be too blue, but it actually makes a really nice contrast. And um, yeah. However, maybe it was a little bit too much garter stitch in the end. It still went on pretty fast uh, once I dedicated to it, and I just focused on it and. You know, it's heavily raining, and I can bet you that in four hours it's going to be super sunny. Anyway, once I focused on it, it went quite fast. So, but still, a lot of card. <laughs> uh, so, maybe that's the reason why all the projects that I have in mind uh, in my Ravelry queue are... Um, quite intense knitting work, like it's lace or cabled sweaters, it's um, really complicated, intricate shawl constructions or heavy color work. So yeah, maybe I'm a bit tired of simple uh, TV knitting. I like it, but yeah, I, I um, if I only made this while I was uh, watching um, watching a TV show or a film, it wouldn't be done. <laughs> it would take forever. Maybe I should just watch more. I should just watch more full films and TV shows, but... Yeah. I really like this. I really like the border section. Um, alternating eyelets and stripes of garter in the contrast color is just... It looks really good. My only, uh, my, my only thing about that was that you had to weave in a lot of ends because obviously, well, maybe I could have carried them because it's, it's like six rows every time. Maybe you could carry it in um, along the other edge. I don't know. I'm not... Uh, I should look it up how to carry uh, colors. 
basically as um, discreetly as possible uh, because I really like that effect and I am uh, thinking about um, designing a shawl of my own. I, um, I'm missing one color yet so maybe I'll talk to you about it then next week. I should have it next week or the week after, it depends because I asked um, I asked a custom dye to match some skins that I had um, to design that shawl and um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you about it next week. But yeah, I just love that effect and um, I'm planning on working on something similar so I'll have to figure out something not to have a dozen ends to weaving in the end. I'll just have to look up the different techniques. So yeah, I am very happy about it. I love the shape of it. It's, I don't think it's as big as the find your fade. It's pretty close though, like it's one. Yeah, it's close to the find your fade, but it doesn't, it's, um, the ends are thinner. So, so it's not as, um, it's not odd at all to, um, wrap it around you like this and you just, okay, I did it like an idiot, but you can see what I mean. Um, it's quite drapey, so. I like how the ends curl. I am so happy with it and it smells so good right now. Um, yeah, this was, um, it was actually the first pattern by Andrea Mari that I saw. No, I've seen the fine new fade, but I wasn't sure about making the fine new fade. And so I went on into Andrea's Mari um, website, I believe, and I saw this one and the photo shoot for it is also absolutely stunning. Um, and this was, I guess, the first pattern that I saw that made me really want to knit seriously. And I finally made it. That wrinkle is annoying. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you can appreciate. And yeah, basically, if I'm wearing it as a proper shawl, which is like this, yep, yep, something like that. It goes, it goes, yeah, until the middle of my back, I'd say. And yeah, this is um, not a style that suits me, but, <laughs> but yeah, I understand that it's comfy to have the shoes like this. However, now it's too hot to have it. So I am going to pack it up and much like the mittens, let it live its life in the closet until the colder month. But yeah, two finished objects this week. How nice is that? Um, now, now that this massive uh, project is out of the way, I... Let me check. Oh, I didn't write it. <laughs> Make podcast notes, but... Yeah, only halfway. <laughs> only halfway there. Um, I now want to focus on my featherweight cardigan. So, featherweight cardigan, patterned by Hannah Fettig. And I am knitting it out of Knit Cosmic Strings. Again, the peony colorway, the same one as the mittens, but this is their lace yarn. And starting to get, starting to empty itself, but I have another cake. Where is the end of that yarn? There it is. <laughs> so I am knitting on the body of it, so it's, um, it's stocking it. So it is actually going faster than what I thought it would. I don't exactly remember where I was with it last time I showed you, but see, I, I think it's some decent uh, body here. But yeah, 
It actually looks like a cardigan. Um, so the edges are, the fronts are rolling, obviously. Um, but, um, so you have two options for the color and the sides of the front. Uh, either a rolled one or a ribbed one. Um, I'll make the ribbed one. Um, so I have to make sure I have enough yarn left to do so. Um, but yeah, even without it, it still looks like a cardigan. I tried it on, it fits. It fits nicely. I, um, yeah, I won't have any issues with the sleeves. And yeah, I really like how the colors are working. The fabric is really delicate. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see how it's going to look when I'm going to block it because I think the yarn is going to plump a little bit and uh, the stitches, oops. I should just call this podcast needles clicking all the way. So yeah, um, <laughs> my stitches are so bad. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really fine lace. I'm knitting it in four millimeters needles. I have gauge. I have gauge, and but the thing is, yeah, my my stitches don't look so good. Um, I'm not used to knitting with such fine yarns. What I'm doing to keep it from being too boring is that I'm knitting the knit side in my normal English style knitting. And I am purling the pearl side in Portuguese knitting, which um, makes it go quite fast because it keeps me interesting. And the Portuguese pearl is so so easy and so super fast that yeah, I almost get go through it faster than the knit side. And um, yeah, I hope to get some progress done on it to finish the body. And um, I think I will do the, the neck line first um, and then I will do the sleeves. Um, I have to look up proper ways of picking up stitches because whenever I have to pick up stitches it's, it looks awful. So I must be doing it wrong. I know I'm doing it wrong, <laughs> but yeah, I need to look up um, for a neat way of doing so. But the thing is, when you have a, an edge like this, like picking up is, is a bit of a pain. Don't know where to look. So I think it's going to be quite a tedious part of the of that project, picking up for the neckband and uh, sides but oh well I think Hannah Fette tells you exactly um, how many stitches to to pick up so so that's going to be okay um, I'll just have to find a nice technique for it um, speaking of Portuguese knitting I wanted to get some Portuguese pins um, especially to make color work because um, you know um, I've seen a very pink knit tutorial on uh, Portuguese. She says feral, but it's not necessarily just feral, just any color work. And it looks so easy. <laughs> um, except that you have to um, read the charts backwards. So I'm not too sure if I will uh, try it for In The Rounds project. Um, maybe I'll, I'll do it for... Um, flat color work because I have a flat color work scarf wrap that I want to make and yeah maybe Portuguese will help me with that but I still want Portuguese pins because you know when you when you put the yarn over your neck and my hair gets in the way and it's annoying so I would like Portuguese pins but I've looked them on I've looked for some and there are nice ones on Etsy, but they're like quite expensive and shipped from the US. No. Um, I haven't looked that much. I've seen someone from the UK does them as well, but they look... I mean, I don't see why I would pay for that. <laughs> Sorry. It's just that I can make them myself because I have hooks for earrings and I, I can whip something up, um, I think. So maybe I'll build my own Portuguese pins. 
Um, but yeah, I'm glad that I learned how to do it because it's really helping in in uh, stocking it for big projects. And my last knitting, um, the art of transitions, right? My last knitting working project, oh, work in progress project is socks. I miss doing socks, <laughs> but I really want to focus on the cardigan, but I miss knitting socks. These are um, the Driftwood socks by um, Minna Philip from the Knitting Expert podcast. And I am knitting it out of Stranded Dye Work Reef Dive, which is beautiful. Um, and this is what it's looking. Yeah, you can see the texture. You can see it. It's really nice. There's a mistake somewhere here. But never mind. It's close to the rib, so you don't see it. And um, yeah, I have done one full. Um, so the way she does it is how she has um, several patterns repeat. It's basically the same technique, but you either space it more or less. And um, I've done one full. So I think my leg is going to have that extra. I love the yarn, I love the pattern. So these are actually going to be the longest socks that I have because I really like how it's looking. I think it's really interesting. And um, yeah, I'm going to focus on my cardigan, but hopefully I'll have some work done on those as well soon. I am doing the 56 stitch version on 2 millimeter needles. I don't have especially small feet. I'm a 39 EU Europe Bay size, so. But I don't know, I think my gauge just loosened horribly um, in the last few months, so. Maybe that's what's happening, but this fits nicely. It's snug, but it fits nicely, so... And it's not even wet yet, so... 56 stitches, why not? This concerns me a little bit because I have some patterns that I really want to make that are like cables or color work or um, more intricate texture patterns that are based on 64 stitches so yeah I guess I'll have to maybe use DPNs because I know I'm tighter on those um, yeah but if I'm that loose on magic loop how am I going to be now with 9 inch I'm going to try uh, knitting 9 inch soon uh, socks for my boyfriend so I guess I'll see how that goes. Yeah. And uh, you know, last week I started the flax sweater. Flax sweater by Tink and Knits, but I, um, I haven't worked on it anymore because I wanted to finish my shawl and I want to focus on my cardigan. So yeah, I think once my cardigan will be done, I'll move on to the flax sweater. And yeah, so... I believe we're done with knitting and um, I, I kind of switch things a little bit. Um, I have some spinning to show you. Uh, ooh, <laughs> I've done all of this. <laughs> um, I just have a lot of rovings in pretty colors and um, these are from my Etsy shop. I want to make um, texture packs bundle of yarns for weavers basically so those are art yarns uh thick and thin and like you know it's like it, oh, almost it's a single ply yeah and they're about 20 grams each and yeah i have so i'm going to pair them two by two and then I'm going to um, to associate them with a third um, hand-dyed um, 
skin. So it will be packs of three uh, 20-ish grams mini skins. Um, I have the yarn soaking uh, for that already and I will dye them um, after I finish filming. But yeah, I have this bright pink. It's not, oh my god, it's not neon like this. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's not neon. <laughs> But it's still a pretty vivid, um, yeah, purpley pink. I have this soft coral. It's called red. Um, all of my rovings like this, I get it from DHG, which is an Italian company that has a lot of fibers. And they call it rouge, which is red in French. And I don't know why, because it's not red, but fair enough. Um, I have a dusty pink, a bright orange, this was like a melon colorway, saffron gold, light blue, mint, um, deep blue, in French we say it, king blue. So yeah, I just have to I just have to pair them basically to make uh, to make duos of them um, yeah to find interesting contrasts I was thinking this looks good um, yeah like this is nice as well yeah you know I was trying to and maybe the, maybe this and um, yeah I'm gonna die um, tonal or speckled, it depends. I'm gonna do both and um, match them. Yeah. I'm still fiddling with them. Oh no, this is not pretty. No, maybe it's better like this. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, I've spun them on my job spindle which is a thing. Spinning on yarn, art yarn on a drop spindle, on a lightweight drop spindle, because I only have lightweight, I find it quite hard to find a heavy weight and um, spindle. So if you spin and know of any heavy spindles, please, um, I would appreciate the, <laughs> the recommendation, um, because you basically, if you are trying to spin something thick, I get back spinning almost instantly. So even though those are rather quick to make, it's still annoying because I have to twist back the spindle every time, um, like uh, constantly, basically. I can't draft continuously. Um, but it also means that since I keep stopping my drafting, it it's not even, which is what I want. So, so yeah, it's a pain, but it works. Um, I, I wonder if it's something that is really uh, simpler on a spinning wheel. Uh, I know that in general, uh, spinning thin is easier, easier, but maybe it's maybe it's better on the on the wheel. Uh, it's probably better on the wheel because you don't have to. You're not using your hands to put the twist in, so so I guess that would help. But I'm doing it on a spindle because yeah. <laughs> I like nice spindles. That's all I have. Um, but they were great. And I am really happy with all those bright colors. I can't wait to take pictures of the sets and um, maybe I'll make them four by four. What do you think? Look. Four and four. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> and uh, maybe I can match two hand dyed, so I will have packs of six. I'll see. I'll see how that goes. Um, packs of three of packs of six, because if I put three, it's gonna be three times 20 grams, so. I think six is a better idea. 
but I'll still uh, make it clear that um, I can custom make those bags because I have a lot of roving left, obviously. And uh, even though I plan to spin some more consistent skin of art yarn, uh, that it's going to be a mix of a mix of all these colors. But um, yeah, they'll be open for customization. And uh, yeah, no more spinning. However, yeah, uh, I'm going to dye mini skins to go with those, and I'm also thinking about dyeing self-striping yarn. You know how I like self-striping um, gobstopperables. But um, yeah, I think it can be interesting to at least try to dye some. Um, so I'm just in the process of making calculations. Um, let me see, do I have it written? Yes, another notebook. <laughs> it's a notebook that I embroidered. So yeah, I just put the stag head on. Yeah, um, so I basically calculated how how much yarn, because um, obviously I want self. I should I should really get my mind organized. I want self striping yarn to knit socks. Um, so I've calculated how much yarn I needed to make one roll one row of a sock. And it's about 60 centimeters for me. So I said, uh, I thought that, for example, I would like um, a skin that would have pink, gray, and orange stripes, and in about equally, like roughly six, or like um, if I only put four row. My gauge is a bit tight, so if I put four row in, it's still a bit tight. If I put four row of one color, the stripe is going to be super thin. That's not the look I wanted. Um, so, yeah, with seven rows each, I need to make a 12 meter skein, which is what I've read people do, making a 12 meter skein. And I have also an idea for a blue tobacco, light green and cream um, stripe repeat and for those if I make a 12 row uh, skin it would mean that every every color will have about five rows each. Um, it's it's simple math but it's just that if if I want um, if I want eight rows of one color and it takes me 60 centimeters to make one row I just yeah I just calculate how much how long I need one color repeat to be and then I'll calculate for the entire circumference so yeah the one with the four color if I make a 12 meter skein I will have fi around five or six rows of each so thinner stripes but at the same time there's more colors so that makes sense um, yeah, I really want to try that, <laughs> but I just have to figure out a way to make the long skeins. I guess I'll just use my, um, you know, my warping peg that I have for, um, the rigid header loom, place it at one hand and just make like a six meter distance thing. But yeah, um, I might wait for sunnier days to do that because, um, my plan is to paint the yarn in the garage so that I don't paint the kitchen with it. <laughs> so yeah, maybe I'll have self-striping yarn and I really want to make them into gobstoppables, even though I don't know how to wind them, um, but I'll have to look it up. Um, yeah, those are gonna be just for me, just for my crazy self-striping sock. Um, addiction. <laughs> um, yeah, what did I say? Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, that's that's about it. Plans to die self striping. That's it. And yeah, we've done weaving, we've done knitting, we've done spinning, and I still have to show you my little cross stitch. You know, uh, I I didn't do much. I really want to because it's really fun. But basically I did the flamey 
tail of one fox and I've just placed some orange uh, elsewhere. This, this is how it looks like at the back. It's not that bad. I mean, I've seen people posting pictures of uh, the back of their crosses and it, it was seamless and perfect, but I mean, when you have a lot of individual C stitches like this, you're bound to trap the end, the beginning and the end of your uh, thread anyway, so it's anyway it's going to look a bit eh. But it's really fun to do, and I can't wait to have more progress done on it. Uh, basically, when I start doing it, I have to stop myself because it's then it's getting dark or. I'm trying to do this during the day, during a normal lit day, um, because it, it's really straining my eyes if I, if I'm doing it in the dark. So, yeah, I think I will need soon to make the head of the fox because right now it looks a bit odd. <laughs> so maybe I'll finish surrounding the tail with black, and then I'll make the head, which I think is the same deep uh, orange than the exterior of the tail but yeah this is where i'm at with that and i think i've covered everything um yeah that's a lot of different things um yeah i i was happy this week because i managed to finish uh i finished one two three or if you count the, all the mini handspun skins, managed to finish quite a few things, and uh, it makes everything much clearer, much more clear, much cl it makes everything clearer. And um, yeah, because having too many things, it kind of stressed me out, and it gets me really unsatisfied because I'm not finishing anything basically. So, I am going to try to be as, um, especially for knitting, I'm going to try to be focusing on only one big project at a time and maybe, maybe have a sock on the go uh, as well. But, um, yeah. And while I'm saying that, I just had a project flashing in my mind last weekend and it made it to the top of my queue and I'm going to cast it on as soon as I finish my cardigan and as soon as I finish my cardigan I'm going to cast it on because I really uh, really want to and um, let me get the yarn for it I've seen um, I've seen the saturate shawl quite a bit uh, on Instagram and things, but I don't know why. Last weekend, it kind of made the bigger impression on me. I don't know who I was browsing um, general knitting tags on Instagram, I think, and that's where I thought I saw someone saturate shawl and dragged me into the Ravelry project pages for that and now I want to make a saturate shawl. So the saturate shawl is a pattern by Orange Knits and it's like a half pie shawl with a fringe. I want fringe on my shawls now. I blame Amy Florence. Um, I didn't quite like the, well, her fringed look shawl looks amazing but um, I really like the saturation and the blending of colors looks really interesting. It calls for five skeins, so I have three. <laughs> I have three. Um, yes, these are uh, one of a kinds by Med by Black Elephant, which is Petra. Um, it's her single space, and yeah, I just thought that. They looked really good together. Uh, it could be a really nice uh, figure fade as well. Um, and I got 
with my birthday money. I got two single skins of hedgehog fibers. Um, I what did I take? I take I took heyday and teacup. I think I think I took teacup. I took heyday to go next to this one because heyday has bright pinks and mint. And I took teacup because it has pink. It's a cream with pink and sparks of brown, I think. And so these are going to be lighter. So yeah, imagine no more space in the phone. So yeah, two light skins of Hedgehog and it's going to be my five skin saturate shawl with range. And yeah, I'm really eager to start this because it's going to be colorful and bright and it's going to have fringe and the pattern looks so complicated. <laughs> So yeah, like I said, I was a bit tired of the garter in my gather shawl. So what do I do? I jump straight into a shawl that has eye cord edging and that has intricate row uh, follow-up. But um, I had a look on the pattern. She seems to be breaking it down quite well and quite in detail. So I guess I'll just have to print it and be very serious about following it and uh, maybe covering with my masking tape what I've done but yeah super colorful saturated shawls is coming soon after I finish my cardigan because I don't want to stress and have too many projects on the go again oh. anyway I am now done and before my phone drops again I am going to wish you a happy day, night, and week. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. He doesn't want to say bye. He's too sleepy.